Warning. The content on this channel is not intended or suitable for minors below 13 years of age. If that is you, please click off and come back when you're older. By continuing beyond this point, you affirm that you are 13 years of age or older. What's up? What is going on, Swears? We are at part nine. Nina of Black Sad. And uh, let's take a look. Let's start from here. We're in our Leary's thing, and we're going to explore that a little bit. But right now, let's take a look at our Black Sad. And we are. No real changes. Mostly a reinforcement of what we had before. We are a bit clumsier than we have been in the past. I think I'm just pooching the quick time events. I think that uh, that's what that's from. So, all right, get out of here. And let's see. So we're fumbling around the dark. I'm not a big fan of this part. Uh, I was expecting some frozen bodies. Oh. Hmm. So we're in the freezer, where I keep all my poster pieces also. <laughs> I just gotta collect these so they don't keep popping up when I look around. I really don't care if I get any of these. Um, okay. Oh, there's another one. Okay. percent sure what I'm doing in here. Other than collecting poster pieces, obviously. The odds are incredibly in Stone's favor. I guess that he's the reigning champion, and Bobby Yale is just a contender, but maybe word got out about his condition. so many bets on a single baseball game. Summary of all the bets that come in. Day, amount, bet, 
Wait a minute. Did O'Leary himself bet five grand on you? Hmm, a little thing he did that adds on its own. What will they think of next? Hmm. What a deed. Sometimes I forget the criminals, even the office variety, have family and kids. Anyway, maybe things aren't so bad on the dark side. Sixteen days until the fight. I must be missing something over there. I'll have to go look again. The good news is, I don't need lockpicks to open it. The bad news, I didn't bring explosives. Even Dunn had a gun in his office. O'Leary couldn't possibly be the exception. Dunn had $200 in his safe. O'Leary had about 20000 in a drawer. Pictures of cats everywhere. Black sack and his cheeseburger. We got air. The painting concealed file after file of celebrity reports. With all sorts of shady information, ranging from S to Z. Almost all of them were athletes. Is that what O'Leary meant when he said that detectives and police officers were his friends? I wonder how many spy for him. If I were to pitch in, who would I spy on?
thought we'd been a rising football star before the war. Richie came back from with honors and decorations. After the truce, he resumed his career. He won three season trophies and a couple of MVP awards. He retired after an accident that left him paralyzed from the waist down. He started his own sports advertising agency four years ago, but according to the files, O'Leary hadn't even tried to corrupt him. Seem not a suspect? What else we got? In Bobby Yale's home, all I found was a log of his incredible stats as an aspiring champion. 20 victories, 16 by Naka. Although, at the end of the report, someone had underlined one word several times. Untouchable. Hmm. Interesting. What else we got here? According to Stone's report, he was so clean, not to mention hard to corrupt, that O'Leary opted for a more subtle strategy. Apparently, when he broke up with the tennis player Helen Moore, he set her up with Stone. Lucky for him, they hit it off. As I put away the report, I stopped in my tracks. Did I really want to risk knowing what O'Leary had on my good friend, the incorruptible police commissioner? Yes, let's read it. I sighed in relief. O'Leary had tried to buy Smirnoff on several occasions, but failed. Luckily, O'Leary had nothing on him, or me. It's a lot of texture. Sentimental romance. Your eyes act like the moon. So this kid has one. This guy has one. This is the other one. Maybe it's done? If they're not together anymore, why does O'Leary keep so many pictures of romantic moments with Helen Moore? Luckily or not, files N through R included no one that I could somehow connect to the case. Jim when he found him snooping around. Okay. Does it say what this goes to? Is this up to N? 
Never file on us. Neil's father was the shortest of all, since only his name was left. Why? among all of O'Leary's files. Apparently, the rivalry went way back. So much so that they spied on each other in the most unthinkable ways. At least I was able to confirm what Yale had told me. Cassidy had threatened Dunn after he refused to join the manager show. revealed that O'Leary had hired Jake as a bodyguard precisely because he was absolutely clean. Apparently, he liked to surround himself with honest people when he mingled with the high society. just a run-of-the-mill tennis player until O'Leary launched her career by rigging enough games to help her climb the ranking. However, O'Leary hadn't fixed any of her games in over a year. In spite of that, she remained undefeated. Be as it may, it was clear that O'Leary had enough information to ruin her career. Huh. 
Yeah. Speak, you moron. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, very well. Uh, but why are you... Shh. Calm down. How long have you worked for me, Jimmy? Three, th th three months. Three months. Oh, yeah. I hired you right after your cousin Martin died. I need your opinion. How would you punish someone for ruining an innocent man's life with a hit and run, Jimmy? I, I don't know. Then tell me, what about you, Wilson? What would you do? <laughs> you don't need to worry about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so it's not safe. <laughs> you can't say I don't treat you well, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Speak, you moron. Yeah, yeah, uh, very well. Uh, why are you... Shh. Calm down. How long have you worked for me, Jimmy? Three, 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 three months. Three months. Oh, yeah. I hired you right after your cousin Martin died. Mm -hmm. I need your opinion. How would you punish someone for ruining an innocent man's life with a hit and run, Jimmy? I, I don't know. Then tell me, what about you, Wilson? What would you do? <laughs> Even though all I really did was 
to rat him out. No, 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 I just... Stop interrupting me, Jimmy. It's not polite. Sorry. All the same. so rude. You know what? Let's leave it at that. You're going to give a message to that disgusting walrus Cassidy, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Whatever you say. Sure, 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 sure. Good boy. What? What? What, 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 what's the message? Goodbye. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. You still don't get it, do you? You are the message. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Bill. Come on. Wrap him up. Make sure Cassidy gets the message for breakfast, will you? Cat, or not fast enough. All right. <clears throat> so, I think we've got time for some deductions here. Can't believe a red panda is that fast. Ridiculous. been the right move there. Two sacred principles rule my life. The first is the love I feel for my family. The second I always blame you're funny, don't you, Mr. Seth? <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, so maybe we'll try to hide. Two sacred principles rule my life. The first is the love I feel for my family. Second, never leave destiny in the hands of fate. I always play it nice and safe. And I'd even add a third principle, or better yet, a rule. If anything threatens either of these two principles, I take matters into my own hand. The first time that someone died because of me, even though all I did was rat him out, well, that guy ended up in the Hudson River, right off Pier 27. He's got to be even wetter than that fish by now. <laughs> you should have seen his face. It's Before interesting when it comes to mind when you think you're about to die. Suddenly all I could think about was how much I wanted a pet fish. By then, I was adamant about buying a fish. But first, 
never ready. Nowadays, whether it's me who pulls the trigger or not, I have zero regrets. What's more, I sort of enjoy it. In case anyone had any doubts about who's the boss around here, I'll put my dirty feet on his luxurious table to prove that all of this is mine. His pupils are dilated, and there's a slight grin on his face. The bastard is enjoying himself. The guy never hesitates to pull the trigger. Even if I hadn't seen what he did to Jimmy, I'd know he's not bluffing. When a mob boss declares his love of family, it can only mean that A, he won't hesitate to ruin yours, and B, he's cheating on his wife. I knew I had it in me to get out of that place alive. wife is having an affair with Colbert? Should I serve this to O'Leary on a silver platter? Or threaten Colbert so he'll get me out of this mess? And, well, that's it, I think. <laughs> you know, Black Sad, I never made it this far. Congratulations, you're going in style. I didn't want to interrupt you because I respect you and your word. Colbert told me to come here. Yeah, remember? At that bar on 33rd and Main Street. Don't you remember that cocky drunk guy? Uh, no. He kept bragging about how he was banging another guy's wife. Oh? Oh yeah, weird times, huh? Yeah, and you congratulated me for finding Yale and saving your life. Several times! Then you assured me that O'Leary would thank me. Well, I didn't put it that way, but yeah. And then you told me to come here to ask the boss himself. Yeah, <laughs> I think you deserve it. Right, Desmond? Oh, black side, black side, black side. Thank you. And sorry for jumping to a conclusion. First, you get a random beating from Wilson. And here we are. When you shared what you'd found in Yale's apartment, well, it made me sort of want to trust you. But as you well know, you can't trust anyone in this world. Take it. It's only fair. Thanks. I'll make good use of it. <laughs> A word of advice. Make bad use of it. It's more fun.
Oh, black side. Aren't these odd hours to pay me a visit? The message was important, but certainly not urgent. It could have waited until tomorrow. Don't you think? Could have. Three cats and wolves hunt at night. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, this is interesting. Okay, we're, we're going to wrap it up here, I think. I didn't want to stop in the middle of, of that whole thing, but uh, I, think, I think we're almost where we're going to be... Um, Going to be taking a pause here. I wish I was a noir fiction writer. At this very moment, I could write a couple of pointed, ironic remarks for the narrator to recount what I just lived through. The dark, crooked alleys of New York reminded me of the state of my own soul. Hmm. No. Fall loomed over me with the Thal struck me with the full force of my long-lost youth. One, nah, not that. <laughs> Thal descended on me with the full weight of a guilty conscience. God, that's worse. I felt fall seep through my bones like the pain of a good hmm. beating. Interesting. Hmm. Mediocre, but appropriate. Oh, okay. All right. So I don't know where we're going to come in on, add on this. Um, this one's getting long. Hopefully we can get it to a spot here where we're going to be able to make some deductions in part 10. I'm trying to curb this now, but if there's stuff that plays, we'll let it go. Okay, the tennis player. Against all odds, next morning I got a bright-eyed and bushy tail. And I had my kind, unknown assailants to thank. The beating had taken its toll. But for the first time in months, I had slept like a baby. Oh, come on, Helen, focus! All right, take five. We'll work on that double backhand later. <laughs> the eye, yeah. Well, Mr. Blackmore, what can I do for the FBI? Actually, the real question is, what don't you want the FBI to do to you? <laughs> Quick to thread, are we? Not that I'm not flattered, mind you, but I'd appreciate if you were a bit less... Okay, after this conversation. Maybe if we could speak in private? Alec! Come in! You've got four minutes, Mr. Blackmore, so make them count. They say you're currently involved with Al Stone, the boxer. Is that correct? Wow. 
The FBI sure knows what it's doing. So, out of the 100 million Americans who know about that, who did you extort to get such highly confidential information? Don't beat around the bush. We know why you're with him. Oh, so you like his biceps too. Desmond O'Leary asked you to seduce Stone. Why? What? No, I met out by chance at a party. A uh -huh. party hosted by Desmond O'Leary. No, that can't be. No one is that shrewd. Not even him. Damn, I hate that bastard. Okay. We know about you and Desmond O'Leary. Wow, your sagacity never ceases to amaze me. Wait, I get it. They must wrap your FBI sandwiches in gossip magazines. The thing is, well... <sighs> you see, I'd love to wipe out that part of my past, but whatever. Do you have any regrets? Ads pay more than trophies. Can you believe it? Being associated with such a shady character could only damage my reputation. Trust me, never get involved with a married man. Well, I won't. We're aware of at least six rigged games during your first year as a professional player. And? You won all of them. <laughs> Are you trying to offend me? I give my all on the court. I can't be held accountable if my rivals don't do the same. Go interrogate them. In any case, now I know why you mentioned O'Leary. What do you really have against him? And don't say illegal gambling. Illegal gambling? I see you don't want to tell me. <laughs> I'm serious, Miss Moore. America can't afford to let anyone shake its foundations like that. And America's sweetheart can't afford it either. Help us out. Talk to us. And why should I, Mr. Blackmore? What do I stand to gain or lose? I'm sure you're aware that we could end your career if what we know goes public. But no one wants that to happen, right? This is actually quite simple. One lucky gal. You have a light, sir? pearly white teeth of someone who barely smokes. Am I making her nervous? Damn. I'm almost out of fluid. Wanna know my trick? Go down to start, then up with it, and then down again. Don't worry, I'm not making any assumptions about your masculinity. Almost. Thanks. I don't know what you want me to say. You're trying to frame O'Leary, perhaps rightfully so, but I think you're barking up the wrong tree. Believe me, if I had the slightest idea... Come on, Helen. Time to work on your backhand. Go! Do you smoke? Nice meeting you, Mr. Blackmore. Did you bring my water? Oh, Lordy. Alright. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Okay, so.
still trying to wrap this up. Yeah, would love to make some new deductions. She tossed the cigarette in your face? <laughs> You're such a loser! <laughs> Too bad I was busy chasing Cassidy. If that had been me, America would no longer have a sweetheart. <laughs> so, what do you say, you and me, we change places next time, huh? Your turn. Now tell me, what did you find out? Ah! You're gonna Lordy. love this. Okay. You ready? I've got news, but I happen to also have a play. Black side. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Black Huh? Oh, Mrs. Colbert. My husband woke me up this morning with roses and breakfast in bed. He said he had a scare last night, although he won't give me any details, and that he's been thinking about me ever since. He wants to take me to Niagara Falls for a second honeymoon. <laughs> That's nice, but I don't know why you're thanking me. Are you kidding? Remember how I doubted him, but you made me change my mind? If he had suggested to take me to Niagara Falls when I still suspected him, I would have thought it was just a cover. Or worse still, a way to clean his conscience. Well, I only did my job as honestly as I could. Enjoy your marriage. I hope you and your husband are happy. Well, that's all I wanted to say. Send me your bill when you can. Okay. You're a good man, Mr. Black Sad. Thanks. Okay. Uh, but what just happened? Is there anything you didn't tell me? Maybe. Now it's your turn. Tell me about Cassidy. Uh -huh. Come on, spit it out. I, I didn't find anything suggesting that Cassidy had anything to do with Dunn's murder, but... That's quite the tale. But I know Cassidy will be playing poker tonight with one Howard M. Farnham II, a Texas tycoon looking to get his claws on the boxing business. I also know that he and Cassidy have never met in person, and that Farnham who's staying at the Balford Hotel, hasn't left his room. Apparently, he spent the night with three bottles of bourbon. So, here's my incredible plan. I'll go to the hotel. <laughs> I'd knock him out. And then, take his place in the poker game. That way, I'll get Cassidy talking. What do you think? Incredible, right? Uh, uh, uh. Didn't we agree that you would handle Helen more while I dealt with Cassidy next time? No? Holy shit! <laughs> this just keeps going on and on and on. Okay, so hopefully we'll get a break point here in a minute. A moose. Good afternoon, Mr. Farnham. What's going on? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm John Blackmore, director of the Balford Hotel. We'd like to make our distinguished guests feel welcome. Please accept this small token of our appreciation. Oh, sure. I was fixing to leave, but I guess them monuments ain't going anywhere. <laughs> well, come on in, then. Getting in Farland's room was easy. Earning his trust was another story. I always have an ace up my sleeve. Blackmore? You okay, partner? The best way to earn someone's trust is to make them believe they've earned yours. And sometimes, the best way to fake it is to tell the truth. I... I don't know where to begin.
The world is falling to pieces. And so am I. Everywhere I look, I see corruption, lies, and filth. New York is nothing but a landfill. The Yankees can't get worked up. Damn Texas, we got them damn Catholics from Mexico. But sure as hell, there's a way to deal with it all. One of the tricks of this trade is to be wary of the biases we all have. They cloud our judgment and blur the person in front of us, painting them with the shades of our preconceived notions of who they should be. But every once in a while, you run into someone so locked in personality this could be just a long that one. they can only be regarded as a stereotype. Farnham was a disgrace, not only to himself, but to Texas and the entire human race. You think I had to impersonate him? I wish I was like you. You seem so content, so free of burdens. Stop right there, partner. You think this old dog don't have tits? Let me tell you something about my first wife. Woo-wee! Once I had gained Farnham's trust. Uh. The hard part was deciding what I needed to know to become him and not get myself killed. I seriously don't know what I would make deductions because it keeps going from one thing to the next. What can I do for you, sir? Howdy. My name's Howard M. Farnham II. Okay. Should I know you? What can I do for you, sir? I'm here to play me some poker. You got the wrong place, sir. Did you miss the barbershop sign above the door? You have a good evening, sir. Wait, uh... <sighs> okay. The hard part was deciding what I needed to know to become him and not get myself killed. Why am I knocking on an open sign? What can I do for you, sir? Farnham was one hell of a drinker. I had to get the information out of him. Before he drank himself unconscious. Otherwise, I'd have to find that information myself. Okay. Ding Dong? Interesting name for a town. Okay, Vietnamese shave. Yes, I got a Vietnamese shave last time. Oh, please, come in. Of course, I remember you. Take a seat. <laughs> what in the hell? I'm sure you'll understand we can't be too careful. Our host has many enemies, and someone has to keep them at bay. Uh -huh. Sure, I get it. I'm glad to hear that. Now, please answer my question. How much does it cost to get yourself a clean Vietnamese shave? Damn sure enough, booze put me nail on the coffin of my first marriage. You know, the wife that caught me cheating with the maid. My second marriage, too. 
You know what I did to her, Daddy? Same old, same old with several mistresses. So I decided to stick to my gun and only deal with her curse. Even if I did end up <laughs> marrying some. <laughs> I feel you, Mr. Farnham. So I'm going to be honest with you. There's a boxer who has it in for me. And I don't know who to turn to. But I wouldn't pay to get rid of that bastard. Well, you just found yourself a pot of gold, Blackmore. I'm playing poker on the box and hot shot this very night. Really? Any chance I could get in? Ooh, I doubt it, boy. I paid ten years worth of your salary fixing to play that game. And that's no more of petty cash to me. <sighs> petty cash, to be honest. I asked you how much. <sighs> of course they gave me a line of receipts. They didn't think I had a poor. Wait, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. I got to get somewhere. Let's just say, I'll get it. <laughs> I just, just put, put it over, over, uh, I think. Uh, I'll be right back. Ding Dong? Interesting name for a town. Not even a Bible. At least it's comforting to know that when Farnham drinks too much, his female companions have less of a hard time. I told you, nothing more than petty cash. Never given a second thought to them small numbers. And you never will. <sighs> okay. We are going to cap it here because this has gone way, way too long. So, uh, <laughs> very extended thing. So, we're getting into a poker game now. We've been able to make deductions, a whole bunch of deductions, but this game keeps sending me from one thing to another. So, I haven't been able to make any of those. We're going to cap part nine right now, and we'll be back for that and more in part ten. We'll see you then, swears. Peace out. <laughs>